I set out to prove a black man could receive a fair trial in the South, that we are all equal in the eyes of the law. That's not the truth. I oh, remember law. that movie. That's Matthew McConaughey playing a Mississippi defense attorney in the 1996 legal drama. Remember this? A Time to Kill. It's just one of the hit Hollywood movies based on the best-selling novels of author John Grisham. Over his 30-year career, he's written 40 books, which have sold, look at that, look at that wall, John, which have sold more than 300 million copies. Grisham revisits his southern roots and confronts racism again in his latest novel. It's called The Reckoning. It's a story that follows a war hero who returns home to a small Mississippi town, and then he kills a popular minister without explanation. John Grisham joins us at the table to discuss. Hello, John. Happy to be here. Always yeah. fun. Dun, it's always dun, good to see dun. you again. Yeah. I know. So we've, we've set up the premise of the book, and you write in the book, every prosecutor dreams of a sensational murder trial with a prominent white defendant. Sure who kills a well-known victim. And you set that up nicely, and the whole book goes to the motive, and you keep us guessing to the very, very end about what the motive is. That was a challenge, is uh, the question is, why did he do it? Yes. And so I wanted to keep you hooked for 400 pages. Not only, did, very end. not only do you keep us hooked, the governor, right before the execution, says, look, if you just tell us why you, do it, why you did it, your life will be spared, and he still doesn't tell. Right, right. Why? It's true, but it's based on a true story. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. that you said that you stole. It's unusual to hear you say you stole. I heard something. the story 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was supposedly it happened in Mississippi in 1930s uh, in a small town. Uh, something like this happened, and the murderer would never tell why he did it, and he was hung on the courthouse lawn. And the governor went to see him and said, the day before and said, Look, uh, I have the power to commute your sentence. I will do so. I don't want, we shouldn't execute you, okay? That's for, that's for low income people. Um, <laughs> but but I'll, I'll save your life if you'll tell us why you did it. And the guy supposedly said, I have nothing to say. Yeah. And they hung him the next day, and the governor had never seen an execution. He had a front row seat. That's the legend. That's the story. Mm -hmm. I hope someone can verify that now that I've stolen the story and published it as a novel. <laughs> uh, we're waiting to see. What's it right as a writer to go, I mean, you, we're used to whodunit. So what's right. the difference between writing a whodunit versus a why done? Well, so yeah. that's part of the mystery. But that was a lot, it was a challenge. It was a lot of fun. I'll tell you up front, you know the first chapter, who did it? Yeah. Yes. The question right. is why, and, 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 and that's a great question the motive was always always there and you and you explore since he was a veteran some of the brutal things he went through in the Philippines yeah it took the, the, the book took a hard left turn about halfway through and he went off to war and uh, I, I knew that was gonna happen I didn't realize I would get that deep in the war but once I got there in the Philippines the Bataan death march and all that it was fascinating and I just the more I read the more I wrote about his experiences there and there's a reason for it later later in the book that we cannot divulge now because we can't give the ending gale yes I'm not it's very difficult but, but, but I'm your, not your wife thought some of the scenes were a bit too graphic I, I, I want to ask you though about what you said earlier that you first heard the story 30 years ago you've yeah. written many books in that time span why did this story still stick with you all those decades later it's just a great story I, I, I didn't create the story I heard it somewhere uh, and I stole it um, but I've had it for 30 years and it's never gone away. I, I, when I heard the story, I wasn't thinking about writing books. It was before oh. my first novel. But that, some stories are like that. I have other stories that have been around for a long time that I hope to get to one day. Are they on a list somewhere? Or yeah. Is it just in your head? No, it's a list. Mm -hmm. There's a file. There's a file fu called Future Novels. And I'll clip out uh, something from today's newspaper and put it in the file and put it in the file and work on the outline and work on the idea. And it's, it's, most of them don't work. Most of them go away, but uh, the file's pretty thick. Yeah, I like, I like Bianca's point that your wife, Renee, weighed in about the war scene, that she thought it was too graphic. You really rely on her advice. She has given you advice about how you write your sex scenes. What sex scenes? <laughs> I tried one sex scene with yes. one book about a legal thriller. About yeah. 30 years. She's always said men cannot write sex, okay? <laughs> sex scenes. Good. No, she says men cannot write good sex scenes, okay? Uh, okay? And so I wrote a good sex scene about 10 years ago in a legal thriller. Uh -huh. And it was late in the book, and she'd read it chapter by chapter as I'm trying to get finished. And so I gave her this chapter with the sex scene. And I heard her laughing upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that says about yes, you, John. It it's, it's not good. It's, <laughs> yes, the well, character was not in a clown I suit. I can't, I, I, I can't do it. You get, you get two people who it's time for them to go to bed, yes. and then what are you, I'm not supposed to describe body parts or something? I just can't do that. Let, let the women do it, okay? I can't do it. Okay. What was that book? I can't even remember what it was. <laughs> I've written so well, many. There are 40 of them. Yeah. I know, John, and you're here for number 40. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Always such a good read. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Always fun to be here. And, always and no F-bombs in the book, Gail. No, I, I, know. Yeah. I know. I know. I know how much you love them, but I, I didn't use them. Before. I didn't say I love them. I just said a well-placed one can be very effective, but I didn't say I love them. But you're right. There aren't any in the book. That's correct. Yes. <laughs>
My pleasure. Good to see you guys. Great to see you again. Thank you, John. The Reckoning is on sale now.